Hi everyone, I'm Sichuan Zhao from SUNY Albany. Today, I'm going to present our paper in collaboration with Chen Pai Wang and Sherry Sahibi on how to model student knowledge transfer among multiple types of learning activities. As we know, using online education system, students can access multiple types of learning materials, such as question, textbook, and video lectures for different types of materials. Students interact with them in different ways. This means student learning activities can have multiple tabs, and students learn from interact with these multi-tab learning materials. Among all material tabs, the assist materials are those can be used to assist student performance. For example, questions and quizzes are assist. Student performance is evaluated by their grade. Video lectures and textbooks are non-assist since student performance cannot be provided. In literature, many well-known approaches have successfully modeling student knowledge by using the machine learning or statistic techniques such as linear regression and recurrent neural networks. However, these knowledge tracing approaches usually only consider student activities of single assist learning material tab and formulate knowledge tracing as supervised sequences learning. More recent, a few multi-activity knowledge tracing approaches also have been introduced. To the best of our knowledge, these four methods are only multi-activity knowledge tracing methods. However, these methods cannot model the knowledge transfer between different material types. Recent research has shown that different learning materials could more or less helpful for learning from other different types of materials. For example, watching video lectures could be more helpful than pr practicing examples for students solving questions. Also, the dynamics of knowledge transfer depend on the transition order. As a result, we propose TomCode, a transition of very multi-activity component on top of LSTM to solve this question. Let's first say our problem formulation. Suppose we have two learning material tabs, questions and video lectures. Then we formulate each student learning activity at learning point T as QTRT, LTDT, where QT represents question ID for the activity with the student performance is RT, and LT represents the video lecture ID. DT is binary value to indicate the learning material tab at each learning point. 0 represents the learning material is question, and 1 for video lecture activities. Our goal is to predict every student performance at each learning point, given their historical activities and the question they will interact next. Therefore, we propose this transition of our model, TomCode. In TomCode, we have this embedding layer that is used to map learning materials and student performance into latent concept space. Then we have a hidden knowledge transfer layer for representing student knowledge. Inspired by LSTM, our model also has four components, an input gate, an output gate, a forget gate, and a memory cell. However, we use different weight matrices for different transition permutations to transfer previous knowledge to current state. To do that, we firstly propose four indicators that are calculated by using dt and dt minus 1, as shown in these four equations. Record that dt equals to 0 or 1 for representing the learning material tabs at each time step. Here, these four indicators represent the transition permutations, just like SLQL means transition from question to lecture, and each of them equal to 0 or 1. When it is equal to 1, it represents the corresponding transition order is activated. At each time point, only one of these four indicators equals to 1. For example, when considering a student interacted with the problem at time t minus 1 and watch a video lecture at time t, then dt equal to 1 and dt minus 1 equal to 0. We obtain SQQ, SQL, SLL or equal to 0 but SQL equal to 1, and it represents students switch it from question at time t minus 1 to lecture at time t. Then we use these four indicators to activate the transition weight for each gate or cell, as shown in these four equations. By doing so, for each gate, only one transition weight is activated at each time. 
using the forgetting gate as the example, if student switches from question to lecture, only transition weight of question to lecture WFQL is activated, just like this equation shows. Finally, we have a prediction layer. In this layer, we concatenate the hidden knowledge state HT with the embedding of next question and pass it to a fully connected layer with sigmoid activation function to predict student upcoming performance PT plus one of question QT plus one. For objective function, we learn the parameters of Tomcat by minimizing the regularized binary cross entropy loss, where RT is the actual student performance and theta denotes all learnable parameters. We have three kinds of experiments to evaluate our model. First, we do student performance prediction experiment. Then, we do student knowledge transfer analysis experiment. The third experiment is student knowledge state visualization. We use three data sets to evaluate our model. The first data set, we call it MORPH. This is a data set of one online course available on the MORPH platform. We select assignments and lectures for running experiments. Atnet is a data set for Korean students preparing for TOEIC English testing. Questions and question explanations are two learning material types in our experiments. Junyi data set is collected from a Chinese e-learning website to teach mathematics to students. We select problems and problem hints as two learning material types. The statistics for this Three data sets are shown in this table. We do five fold student stratified cross validation as well. At each fold, sequences from 80% of students are used as training set, and the sequences from the rest of 20% of students are used as the testing set. Also, we use 20% student sequences from training set as validation set to turning parameters. We utilize six state of art single activity models and two multi-activity models as original baselines to evaluate time code. To provide a fair comparison, we also extend the six single activity models to be able to consider multi-type activities. We call this kind of baseline method plus M. In addition, we also extend the MLP as another baseline. In total, we have 14 baselines for evaluating time code. We use RMSE as the evaluation matrix for MORPH dataset and AUC for ADNET and GENE. Let's first say how TomCode does in student performance prediction. First, we can say that TomCode significantly outperforms all single activity models. Then, compared with multi-activity setting models, our TomCode also outperforms all of them. This also shows the importance of modeling non-assist student activities. However, compared with multi-activity models, TomCode outperform all baselines in ADNET and GENE, but DMKT has better performance in MORPH dataset. We hypothesis it is because learning material in the MORPH dataset are more complex. Each MORPH assignment includes multiple problems that can cover multiple concepts. DMKT uses a memory augmented network in their model, which better matches the data complexity with MORPH. Then we did experiments to evaluate the knowledge transfer to see whether the knowledge transfer from question to lecture is similar as from lecture to question. We compared transition weight matrices WFQL and WFLQ of FORGETGATE. Record that WFQL represents knowledge transfer weight from question to lecture in FORGETGATE, and WFLQ is from lecture to question. We first calculated the experiment correlation between these two matrices of each dataset. We found that for GENE and ADNET dataset, these two matrices have significant positive correlation, while the correlation in MORPH dataset is very small and not significant. Then we plot the heat map to visualize WFQL and WFLQ. We observed that knowledge transfer is generally different but exists some similarities in MORPH. For example, we can find these elements have similar value from these two very different matrices. On the other hand, from similar with matrices of ADNET and GENE dataset, we still can find some difference, such as these two examples.
We think the reason for these observations between different data sets is because the close-knit associations between material types in GE and ADNET, but more for assignment includes multiple problems with concepts from multiple lectures. Our, overall, our experiments demonstrate that transfer weights could depend on the transition order between material types. For visualizing student knowledge, we calculate the predicted performance in each assignment at every time point of one sample student, and we plot the heat map to show it in this figure. Here, the upper x-axis ticks represent learning materials that students interacted with at each time point. The bottom x-axis ticks are the student performance for each question attempt, or video icon for non-assist activities, and y-axis ticks are the question titles for predicted performance. For example, this cell denotes the predicted performance of assignment 1 after the student tried assignment 3 at second time point. Firstly, we found that videos produce knowledge improvement for corresponding assignment. For example, from these activities of watching video lecture from week 6, the student's knowledge has highest improvement for assignment 6. Then, we observed that if students interacted with lecture multiple times, the first attempt of video lecture leads the largest improvement. For example, these activities of week 4's video lectures, we can say that after first attempt of watching week 4 video 0, student knowledge increases a lot, while the last two attempts just improve knowledge a little bit. To conclude, we proposed a transition aware multi activity knowledge tracing model, TomCot. TomCot can model student learning from multi type learning activities and learn the knowledge transfer between different types. Our experiments show that the transition aware knowledge transfer is necessary to accurately represent student knowledge and predict their performance. We also conclude that the amount of knowledge transfer between concepts could depend on the transition order between activity tabs. That's all for today's presentation. Thanks for listening. Our code and data are available at this GitHub link. If you have any problems or suggestions, please feel free to contact us.